Well, how do that? Jams does I, captain of the station today. Jams is a cup of tea with Captain Steve. But what are we talking about today, people? We're going to be talking about Starfield and the launch of Redfall and whether we should be concerned or not. But then I'm also going to move into will Starfield compete with No Man's Sky? Do they share commonalities or are they very different games? So we're going to be doing a little bit of a deep dive into Starfield, a little bit of thoughts and feelings around Redfall. So here we go then people, let's jump on over to my reactions cam and let's get this started shall we? Thank you. Boom! And I'm over on the Tinter web. Now, Firstly, if you look at Redfall on the old Wikipedia, it states that the engine that was used is the Unreal Engine 4, which I'm fairly sure on previous games that uh, Arcane have put out there, they've used the Cry Engine, you know, like, you know, yeah, the, the Cry Engine basically, but now they're using Unreal Engine 4, so perhaps the shift to Unreal Engine 4 for them, I don't know why they used version 4, why not use 5 since that's the latest one, but there we go, as a next gen game you would have expected them to use the next gen tools, but yeah, hasn't panned out for them too well, has it? When you look at Starfield, Starfield is actually using the, the Creation Engine 2. So it's a completely different engine, it's a different set of developers that are developing Starfield, so I don't know whether it's fair to measure the two together. That said, Bethesda actually owns Arcane, and yeah, it, it is going to affect them when it comes to reputation. They can't really escape that. Anyway, I jumped over to chat GPT. And I actually said, how are Arcane Studios and Bethesda linked, even though I know the answer to that question, and they're both sort of owned by ZeniMax. Well, ZeniMax Media bought Bethesda, and Bethesda bought Arcane, so yeah, it's a bit like Russian dolls, isn't it? Nesting dolls. Anyway, I put here, do they both use the same game engines to make their games? And yeah, you can see here the Creation Engine and Creation Engine 2 is used with inside Bethesda, whereas, there we are, the Cry Engine is often used with inside of games like Deathloop, Prey, um, or the Void Engine. There's a modified version of the Cry Engine, I should say, so Crytek. Yeah, so they use different engines, people. They use different engines, so hopefully they're not going to come across the same sort of buggy mess at rollout. But then saying that, you know, Bethesda has put out some of the Fallout games, and some of the Fallout games have been buggy messes at launch, and sort of been left to mods by the community to actually fix them. And you could say the same for Skyrim. Some of the Skyrim mods are freaking awesome. But at least Bethesda sort of opened it up to the mods and had their own like little creation house to bring those mods into game as like permanent features or fixtures, which yeah, maybe that maybe that same sort of thing would be applied to the likes of Starfield, but I don't think it's fair to overthink that Starfield is going to release in the same state as Redfall. I mean, yes, I know that they call Bethesda Bugfesta. And they have got a reputation themselves, Bethesda, of releasing, releasing and buggy games. But you've got to think Starfield's been delayed, what, two, three times now? So hopefully it's given them enough time to iron out the crazy critical bugs. And we might come across some. I mean, I'm not going to rule it out. But here we go. Now, I did go on to talk to um, ChatGPT to say whether it might affect the Xbox Series X and S having very few titles with the MS acquisition of Bethesda, and could this be like a death knell, in a, in, in a way, to Xbox? And um, yeah, ChatGPT has come back to say, well, it's going to affect them quite massively. You know, it's... It is on the cards, isn't it, really? You know, is this really the best acquisition Microsoft could have made? I mean, on paper it looks freaking great. Uh, and they did ring fence Starfield, which is a massive title this year. And it could be the biggest title of the year. But at the same time, I'm kind of thinking that this is good news for Sony either way. If Starfield releases, and Starfield's in a great state, and it's freaking awesome, and yes, it makes Xbox players jump around, jump for joy, then I guess Sony have got to try and find some sort of space adventure game that is similar, or better, or comes close to Starfield, to sort of capture some of that player base. So hopefully it's going to raise the bar and push up the ante for Sony, which they always rise to the occasion, and rise to the challenge. I mean, I've backed Sony for some time, call me a Sony pony if you like, but I've got a gaming PC, I play all my games that I want to play over on my gaming PC, rather than get an Xbox. 
Xbox. I just kind of don't see the point in a gaming console when PCs are so powerful and even a gaming laptop can do what an Xbox can do and more. So I've always gone down the PC route. And PC for gaming when it comes to high-end games like Star Citizen, things like that. But then if I just want to casually game on PlayStation, you know, I've always been into the old PlayStation. And I guess gaming on my PC, though, because I work on PCs every day, it kind of feels like an extension of work because I'm still on a PC, you know. So I've always had a console as well as having a PC. Anyways, enough about me. Back onto this. So, yeah, even chat GPT says it could damage the reputation and it could impact the player base on xbox because this is such a pivotal critical title for xbox and microsoft have done this to themselves microsoft have put themselves in this corner i mean if starfield releases in a really buggy nasty sort of state and it's something like redfall then again it's just going to drive people over to sony so either way i think sony is going to come out of this okay at the end of the day people I think they are. And I also think Sony have got a title anyway, where it comes to a space adventure that's pretty much second to none, and that's No Man's Sky. But, you know, I'm slightly biased. I freaking love No Man's Sky. Anyway, I'm going to jump on over. I'm going to play you the Starfield trailer in a moment, people. This one here, the game gameplay one that's been out for freaking ages because we haven't had anything else yet. But we are going to get something in June, which I'm hoping to cover on my channel when it comes to Starfield. Anyway, looking at all these sort of thumbnails, though, you're going to see here the pressure is on for Microsoft. Through to, yeah, and that's talking about Redfall and Xbox and Bethesda. And you can scroll down, make or break. Really good video there by Reforge Gaming. Reforge Gaming, a freaking awesome content creator and a great spokesperson. He puts everything into terms that I kind of... He says what I'm thinking most of the time. If you haven't checked out Reforge Gaming, check him out. Freaking awesome. And scrolling down a little bit further, you've got this about panic with this star, Starfield. Is it guaranteed to fail and all that sort of stuff? There's a lot of videos out there. You can see that I've got red bars on some of them. You know, I've, I've watched quite a lot of these, you know. So, yeah, Dreamcast guy. He makes some very, very good points about Xbox gaming as a whole. Anyhow, so yeah, hit up some of those videos if you want to see a little bit more. Delayed again, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to hit on up this trailer because I want to pause it at various places and make comparisons to No Man's Sky. So let's open this up. So hopefully, if you haven't seen this before, this might be something cool for you anyway. Oh, I'm just going to turn up the volume. I'm, I'll, um, I'll uh, stop my Winamp for a second. Let's turn up the volume of PC so you can hear the music and everything that's being said. Drink some tea. It's hard to express how excited all of us at Bethesda are to be here with you today. We're so grateful you're spending the time and we know you've waited a long time to finally see Starfield. Uh, it's easily our most ambitious game ever. Like our previous games, it's an epic role-playing game where you get to be who you want and go where you want. But this time, you'll be exploring space. So let's jump right in. This is early in the game as you arrive on the mysterious moon of Crete. So something to take note of during this video is every single time the ship lands or the ship takes off, 
it's an animation and it seems to be a very standard animation now they've already confirmed that there will be no low orbit flight there'll be no transition from planet to space like you see in no man's sky it's going to be cutscenes that handle the two separate verses almost like two separate games melded together being on planet being in space Now you can see here there's some sort of exomech that's going to be doing some of the planetary exploration and you accompany it on foot. Inside of No Man's Sky you also have an exomech and you can traverse the planet in it also. So there is that similarity already. According to the scanners, the abandoned research facility is in this direction. Okay, so on this screen, this shows a lot of what maybe the actual gameplay will be like. You can see here, survey, 66.6%. Now, they've already found five of the eight resources. Perhaps this isn't the first time they've landed on this actual planet. But they're just scanning one of the resources here which is some sort of flora. You can see there, scanned, 13% flora. And there's flora, there's fauna, and there's resources, so technically minerals. So yeah, a bit like No Man's Sky, where you're scanning things and sort of, you know, maximizing your survey record, which is pretty much like No Man's Sky. So at this point is encountered some alien life forms. Now these alien life forms, they're not really taking overly interest in him. So perhaps not every single creature that you would encounter is going to be aggressive. Like No Man's Sky, where you get predatory fauna and you get some sort of relaxed fauna. But if you shoot them, it's going to probably make them angry. Angry. They probably are going to charge at you. A little bit like No Man's Sky. So in the bottom right hand corner down here, you can see that the actual weapon changed to what's called a cutter. Almost like a multi-tool, wouldn't you say? Yes, and he's mining some minerals. By the looks of things, iron. And where have I seen that before? Where have I seen multi-tools and mining of iron? <laughs> no man's sky! I think you get where I'm going with this whole video, people. Anyway, I'm going to hit play. Something else to note down here, you've got photo mode, which is the RB button or whatever. But um, yeah, photo mode also part and parcel of No Man's Sky. of the Crimson Fleet are using the facility. Okay, now No Man's Sky has received quite a lot of updates when it comes to combat. But it doesn't seem to be as fleshed out as what we're seeing here. There's going to be NPCs that are bipedal that come at you that have some working AI that should act as if it was like another player going face to face with you or whatever. But when you look at the AI inside of this, I wouldn't say it's that clever. I mean, they do duck and cover behind crates, but they do just pop out and just say, here's my head, shoot it. You know, it, 
it doesn't feel like may, maybe there's difficulty settings who knows i do like the fact that you can see how much ammo is on top of your gun here you also do get a readout down here but I, I do like all of this what i'm seeing when it comes to combat i'm liking i have seen a lot of people saying it looks very basic yeah perhaps but then there's so much more to this game other than the combat You see what I mean there? That that AI of just running towards you with no weapons, it, it, that didn't make sense to me. I mean, he was facing right at that AI when the grenade got thrown, but did the actual guy duck and cover or try and kick the grenade back or hit it back with their gun or something? No, no, they didn't. The AI, I think, needs a bit of work. But then again, this was early footage. Maybe it's had that work. Okay, so lock picking and things like that. We do get puzzles inside of No Man's Sky, but I wouldn't say it's anything quite like this. I mean, they have had lock picking in sort of their other games like Skyrim and things like that. And it's quite a, a built-in part of a Bethesda game, if you like. So I think we're going to see a lot of Bethesda-esque type stuff that we haven't seen inside of No Man's Sky. And I think it's going to be quite akin and you know, a familiar world for those that have played Fallout or any other Bethesda title. I mean, the whole AI there, where it came out of cover, knowing that there's a guy walking around with a gun that could likely shoot them in the back of the head, and then being shot in the back of the head, didn't make much sense. And the other guy that jumped on top of the crate, within the same situation, that's already taken damage and is probably injured, again, the AI just needs a lot to be desired, unless they've got this on easy mode or story mode or something. You could see there the use of a jetpack, which again, No Man's Sky, you use your jetpack a heck of a lot. After some initial encounters, you're invited to join Constellation, who in the future the game is set in, are the last group of space explorers. To meet them, you'll head to the capital city of New Atlantis. Again, you've got these landing and takeoff animations, and it looks like there's going to be designated places to land. And if there's like, what, a thousand planets you can explore, does that mean that every single one of these thousand procedural planets, even ones perhaps without outposts on, are going to have designated landing spaces? And does that mean you're going to have to walk for miles to find the local fauna and things like that to actually catalogue? And are everybody going to have the same experience landing in exactly the same place? Are we just going to see repeats and rehashes of the same content being pushed out on the old tube of you? There is probably a chance of that. So I think No Man's Sky has got some sort of hold above this, to be honest, because you're not restricted by set landing points and paths. Welcome to Constellation. We have a lot to talk about. We're all here because we're committed to the biggest question of all. What? 
Okay, now with the amount of delays that have happened with Starfield, some of the actual character interactions there, some of the actual movements of the face and the expressions seem dated now, you know? I think they missed the boat on this slightly, even Hogwarts Legacy that had complaints about the lip syncing and some of the actual facial expressions have this beat now, you know? So I think now, looking at some of these bits of footage when they were impressive when they first dropped, now it's like, well, we've seen better. So I don't know, have they missed the boat slightly on that one? And also, unlike No Man's Sky, No Man's Sky, the only real place that you interact with people is either at Hollow Terminus or inside of the Nexus. Here it seems that there's going to be a lot more story-driven content. So is it less like No Man's Sky in that regard? Is this more like the likes of you know Half-Life and games like that? Um, yeah, hmm. Half-Life might not be the best example. Mass Effect. Mass Effect is probably a better example, which is more of a talking simulator as time goes on. Is there going to be a lot more talking involved inside of this? Is the story going to be a bigger focus than the exploration? Which, you know, No Man's Sky is more about the exploration. So maybe the games are a little bit separated when it comes to that. But what you do on the planets, other than drive the story, looks very similar to what we do in No Man's Sky. What's out there? These artifacts could be everything we've been looking for. As to what they are, what they're building. You'll be part of solving that puzzle now. So... So the whole alien monoliths inside of this, very Space Odyssey, but then again, so is No Man's Sky when it comes to the monoliths and the Atlas inside of No Man's Sky and the interactions with Talamon. This has got notes, even when it comes to the lore and the sub-story, as to what I'm seeing inside of No Man's Sky, loosely granted. You found something? The new guy found it. You dug up the artifact, right? That means you saw it. The visions? The artifact you found appears to be one of many, scattered across the galaxy. If we can find more, we can unlock their secrets. Beautiful, isn't it? The man who sold me this told me that it spoke to him. Of course, the Settled Systems is full of groups with other priorities. That's the Crimson Fleet! Everybody get ready! The fleet doesn't follow the rules. Agree to work for UCC Steph. Together, we take down these cutthroat pirates. We're not just here to shoot the bad guys. We're peacekeepers. We protect the people of the Free Star Collective. When you sign up with the Crimson Fleet, no one quits. The only way out is death. Now, I haven't done a lot of research into how many giant cities there are inside of Starfield, but each one of them seems to have its own sort of feel and its own sort of ambience, and it does look like it's going to be a very nice place to living and play in, to be honest. And it does make you wonder whether you're going to be given the opportunity to have any sorts of settlements within inside of those cities. There is base building in this, which we're going to touch on in a bit. Death. The path ahead may be dangerous. We are not stopping. Most Dusties don't even make it this far. Because whatever lies at the end of this road will change humanity forever. So you saw some very quick scenes there of resource gathering, giant fauna, and also some sort of unknown alien tech and weirdness going on. Very No Man's Sky. That gives you a look at the stories in Starfield. But ultimately, it's not our story. It's the story you create by who you are and the choices you make. And that starts with character creation. It's our most flexible yet. You can customize all the elements of how you look. Okay, so this customization, the character customization looks freaking great. And um, I. I really like this aspect. However, whenever you're making like really decent characters in game, it's really nice to have the multiplayer aspect so you can meet and see other people's creations. But as far as I know, there's no multiplayer planned for this actual title. But imagine if there was. Imagine if there was an online version of Starfield in the future. That'd be freaking ace, wouldn't it? You'll find out 
you'll pick a background that gives you three starting skills. It says here you spend some time as a diplomat. Having a way with words might prove useful. There are optional traits, and these come with unique advantages and disadvantages. But it's not just in how you can look, but in how your character plays and develops. The skill system combines the best from our previous games, and you can unlock... Now, I love the artwork on these patches. These are freaking awesome. And, you know, we've got the patches that have been introduced inside of the expeditions inside of No Man's Sky. Did No Man's Sky see some of this beforehand or get an idea that they might be implementing this sort of thing in Starfield? Or did those over at Bethesda see what was happening on expeditions in No Man's Sky and thought, you know what, why don't we have patches to mark our actual skills? Who knows? I'm wondering whether they borrowed things from each other. Unlock new skills as you level up, and then you rank those skills up by using them and completing challenges. And there's deep crafting systems, from running research projects with resources you find, to crafting weapon mods needed to survive. And you can build your own outposts. These act... So you build your own outpost. I would imagine you've got to find a place on the planet to do so. Now, if you have got all these sort of designated landing points, you know, it kind of makes you think you've still got to wander away from those. There, there might not be boundaries that stop you from going too far because you need to pick the opportune place to put a base, really. So I'm hoping there's going to be more exploration than what we've seen in the likes of, you know, um, Mass Effect and those other sorts of games out there or whatever they are. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully people. As a home away from home for survival and resource generation, you can choose where and how to build each one, and you can hire characters you meet to keep it up and running. But that's not all. You can even build your own spaceships. So being able to customize your own starship, being able to customize your own weapons, things that we don't really get in No Man's Sky. Yes, we can customize our freighters and we can build out a freighter base and we can have crews inside of our freighters. But this goes to another level. I kind of think that just this one aspect of this game is going to keep me occupied for hours, maybe days on end, just getting my ship to look the way I want it to look and get the crew I want to have. And also the base building does look quite good fun too. So I think just those two aspects, whether the story or not, are going to keep me engaged with this for quite a long time. You can choose crew members. And yes, you can completely customize the look and layout. There's loads of different modules, ship manufacturers, and more. I have to say, it's so cool, we just absolutely love this. It's not just how the ship looks, it's how it performs. From engines, to shields, to weapon systems. Because yes, you can fly it. Thrusters boosted. It says you can fly it, but that's not a cot. That's not a cockpit view. You're not sort of doing all the dials and things. That's a freaking animation. So are you just going to hit take off, and then it plays an animation? And are you going to hit land? And is it going to play an animation, or is there going to be some technicalities involved in take off and landing? We'll have to wait and see when the game drops. But by the looks of things, from what we're seeing, you don't really fly it from from the ground up into space, and from space down to the ground. It looks like cutscenes. Something to also mention is when it was inside the cockpit view there, let me just see if I can pause it at the right point, but you see this screen down in the bottom area here with all the little plus signs all over it. That looks to be like the galactic map. Hit that, it brings up a galactic map, and then you choose the system you want to go to. Then I think you get another cutscene of it actually warping.
Now I can see there that the ships have a shield and they also have a whole sort of structure. Fairly similar to No Man's Sky, and the combat here that I'm seeing, I'm only seeing a couple of weapon types actually implemented and used, so maybe the combat system is going to be about as engaging as that of No Man's Sky. It doesn't look like it's going to be overly engineered, or at least, I mean this could be early game, maybe you get more turrets, maybe you get more weapon choice later on, but at the moment it, it looks fairly basic. Now I think purposely there, they showed quite a lot of different ship types that you can fly and uh, a lot of ship different configurations that you can go for, just to sort of show off just how much customization there is in the actual ships. We can't wait for all of you to experience the game. Thanks again for being with us today, and thanks for all the support you've given us over the decades, especially on this game. It's been an incredible journey for us making it, but we know that's really only the beginning, for it's when all of you play it that the real journey begins. And you may be wondering, just how big is this game? So we thought we'd take one last moment and show you. Let's take a look at one of our planets, Jemison. You can land in New Atlantis, but you can also land and explore anywhere on the planet. And it's not just this planet, it's all the planets in the system. From barren but resource-heavy ice balls to Goldilocks planets with life. And not just this system, but over a hundred... Now something to note there, when it was looking at each of those planets, it told you whether there was a lot of fauna or flora on them. So a lot of the actual planets might be duds, even when it comes to just surveying it for resources or for the actual fauna itself. However, even the ones that are without fauna, some of them have minerals. I'm hoping to do a playthrough inside of this game where I land on every single planet and give a little bit of a heads up on what to expect on the planet and anything that's notable for said planet. I do want to just do exploration, and I'm hoping that's going to be a choice, but at what point from the story can I break away to invest in what I want to endeavour into? We're going to have to wait and see. ...hundred systems, over 1,000 planets, all open for you to explore. We can't wait to see what you find. Now, although they've probably done this as if to say, look at all these different biomes, or look at all these different biomes we've got, watch the takeoff animation. I mean, the ship and the actual way that it takes off from the actual planet remains the same, and the planet changes each time. How bored are we going to get watching the ship take off and land, even if it is a beautiful planet? It's the same animation. It'd be nice if they switched it up a bit. Maybe they will in the actual end game, but this is what I'm on about. Here we go. Taken off from a crater, taken off from a hill. Yeah, there we go. Boom, boom, boom. You see the background changing, but the animation of the ship doesn't. So I see a pro and a con there. <laughs> you know? But yeah, and that, and that sort of end animation, that's what I think we're going to get when we jump from system to system. I am thoroughly excited for this title. But I think you can see there the actual comparisons that I've made to No Man's Sky. There was, there was quite a few of them. Quite a few comparisons to be drawn there. Um, I don't know whether I've been overly overly sort of on top of that or not let us know in the comments let us know what you think do you think that people are going to be drawing comparisons at launch through 
you know, Starfield to No Man's Sky or other space titles. But what I would say is if this does raise the bar in space exploration games, if this knocks No Man's Sky out of the park, then hopefully that's going to push Sony to thinking, well, what can we do to better this? Now, you already know that Hello Games is working on a title that's as ambitious as No Man's Sky. Now, if Starfield was to make a big dent inside of Sony's player base because it's such an awesome title and draws people to the Xbox or to PC and moves people away from the Sony playlist, then if I was Sony, I'd probably make a little sort of... <laughs> I don't think I'd reach out to Hello Games and say, Hello Games, we want to buy you. Because, you know, they already make VR possible. I mean, play No Man's Sky in VR is probably one of the best VR titles out there. So, you know, I think it's got a lot going for it, a lot of merit. If you think it's got a lot of merit, do you think Sony could be interested in acquiring or or purchasing of Hello Games? Let us know. Let us know in the comments. Because I think that would be a really good chess move for them, I honestly do. Because Hello Games, as a studio, are such a talented crew. I mean, they're quite a small crew, but if you could actually bolster that with maybe Sony Interactive and Sony's studio... The games that Hello Games and so so Sony Studio could make would be phenomenal. They really would. Anyway, people, I'll leave that with a final thought for you. That's my cup of tea with Captain Steve. I finished my tea long ago drawing that actual video. I hope you enjoyed this. Until next time, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. <laughs>